It looks like acne. It acts like an infection, but it's neither. So what exactly is hydradenitis separativa? Imagine living in constant pain that never seems to heal, and then your doctor says, well, it's just an infection. This is the reality of HS. It's not caused by poor hygiene, it's not just acne, and it's definitely not your fault. In this video, we're going to define exactly what hydradenitis separativa is, go into that pathophysiology, so if you can understand the why, then we can better understand how to identify and treat it. Okay, today, hydradenitis separativa, let's go. Welcome back to Citizen Surgeon. My name is Dr. Eric Pearson, and today we're talking hydradenitis separativa. Today we're going to talk about exactly what HS is. We're going to define the pathology, and then in future videos, we're going to go through risk factors. We're going to go through how we can diagnose it, how we can stage it, and then we're going to talk about how we can treat it. I'm going to bust some myths about it today. All right, and first I'm going to tell you, well, what is hydradenitis not? So what isn't it? It's not infectious. It's not due to poor hygiene. It's not boils. It's not acne. It's not ingrown hairs. So what is it? Hydradenitis separativa, or HS for short, is a chronic inflammatory condition of the skin. It specifically affects the hair follicles, leading to painful lumps, abscesses, and sinus tracts, especially where the skin rubs together. So let's get to myth number one. Myth number one, and I mentioned this before, is that hydradenitis is not due to poor hygiene. Well, the myth is that it is due to poor hygiene, but that is completely untrue. Even people with meticulous skincare and meticulous hygiene can suffer from hydradenitis separativa. Okay, so where are these areas? So it's a chronic inflammatory disease of the skin affecting the hair follicle, leads to painful lumps, sinus tracts, abscesses, where the skin rubs together. So where are those areas? Well, most commonly, we're going to see hydradenitis affecting the axilla. We're going to see it affecting the groin. We're going to see it affecting the area under the breasts. And we're going to be seeing hydradenitis separativa affecting the buttocks area, okay, especially where we have increased friction. And this brings us to myth number two. And myth number two is that HS is just bad acne. Well, it's much more severe than acne, okay? And what are the differences between acne and hydradenitis separativa? Well, both of these are because of follicular occlusion. But HS is much more severe because we have a massive immune response and immune dysregulation. In addition, while acne is usually self-limiting and due to excess sebum production, hydradenitis is chronic, progressive, and unrelenting unless it is treated. Okay, so HS is not just bad acne, and that is myth number two, busted. All right, so let's get into the pathophysiology of hydradenitis separativa. So the first step in hydradenitis, or HS, is follicular occlusion. Now, this is much more severe than in acne. And in HS, we get follicular hyperkeratinization, so increased keratin production within the hair follicle within that infundibulum. Okay, and so you get massive amounts of keratin being produced and you get a keratin plug. This leads to occlusion or a blockage in that hair follicle. The key concept here is that it's not just occlusion of the follicle on the surface, 
So you can't just wash it or scrub it off. It's occlusion of the follicle within the shaft and the infundibulum. So it's much deeper than we would see in something like acne. And we have that represented right here where we can see this yellow along the hair follicle is just a buildup of keratin all the way through that hair follicle or that shaft. And that leads to follicular occlusion. Well, what happens after that? Well, hold on. I'm going to tell you myth three. Well, what's myth three? Myth three is that hydradenitis separativa is contagious. This is absolutely not true. Hydradenitis is not contagious. It is a chronic inflammatory condition of the skin that is in individuals that have immune dysregulation. So you can't just touch it and, and spread it, all right? So it is not contagious. So that's myth number three, busted. So let's get into the next step. Well, what happens after we have this keratin plug and we have follicular occlusion? Well, when the hair follicle gets occluded, the hair follicle begins to swell and it swells to a point that it can't take it anymore. Almost like an appendix, it ruptures. And when it ruptures, keratin, debris, bacteria, sebum are now leaked into the dermis and that causes a massive immune response. And we can see that in this image right here increased inflammation around that hair follicle that is swelling and is now ruptured. Now, after we get that follicular rupture into the dermis, we have an immune response to that. And patients that have, and people that have HS, have innate immune system dysregulation. So remember, when we look at the immune system, we have the innate immune system, which is a very rapid reaction to infection and inflammation. And we have the adaptive immune system, which is T cells, B cells take some time, that adaptive immunity or that antibody response. It's a simple way of looking at the two, all right? So people with HS have a dysregulation of this innate immune system and they have an over response. That exaggerated innate immune response leads to massive elevations in tumor necrosis factor alpha. We have interleukin 1 beta, interleukin 17, interleukin 23, and this leads to an elevation in these T helper cells. Now these TH17 cells lead to a chronic self-sustaining inflammation even though an infection isn't present. So what is this special about these Th17 cells? Well, the elevation specifically in interleukin-17 and interleukin-23 lead to increase these Th17 pathways, and that leads to tissue destruction, abscess formation, and sinus tract formation. And so one of the treatments that is new and coming out are specific blockers of these interleukins. So for example, a drug called secukinumab is an anti-interleukin-17 uh, antibody. And so that is going to block these Th17 pathways and hopefully decrease that immune dysregulation in hydradenitis separativa. There are other drugs coming out and I'll post those in the discussion below. So definitely check those out. And that gets us to myth number four. So what's myth number four? Because this is in the groin and because this is in the buttocks, there is a myth that hydradenitis separativa is an STD or a sexually transmitted disease. Well, that is, again, absolutely not true. It's not contagious. It's not an STD. It's a chronic inflammatory condition of the skin at the hair follicle in areas of high friction where the skin's rubbing together and these people or patients with hydradenitis have a dysregulated immune response. Okay, as we get further along, this definition of hydradenitis is becoming more complete. Okay, so if we have this immune response, we've got this Th17 cells that are going crazy, what can happen? Well, we can have complications from hydradenitis. Now, what does that look like? Well, we can have abscesses. We can have sinus tracts. We can have pitting. We can have scarring. And we can have a lot of pain. 
And those are the complications associated with hydradenitis separativa because this is a chronic, self-sustaining, progressive problem that needs to be treated. In this illustration, we can see that if we have that swelling follicle, we have follicular rupture, we're going to have inflammation. If we get a collection of infected fluid under the skin, we're going to get abscesses. And that's why we can see when we have these sinus tracts or abscesses, we're going to get pus that is leaking from these wounds. And in this diagram right here, we can see that we can have subtle pits or we can have larger wounds. Okay. And in the next video, we're going to be talking about risk factors for hydradenitis separativa. We're also going to be talking about how we can diagnose it and the different stages. So, recap today, hydradenitis is not due to poor hygiene. It is not acne. It's not contagious. It is not an STD, all right? We know what it's not, and what is it? It is a chronic inflammatory condition of the skin, specifically the hair follicle. We get buildup of keratin, not at the surface, but deep along the shaft in the infundibulum that leads to swelling of the follicle, rupture, and unfortunately, a exaggerated, dysregulated immune response. So knowing all that, how are we gonna treat hydradenitis separativa. We're going to talk about that in a future video. If you want to get another video, I think a good one to this, a compliment, would be looking at the wound healing videos. And we can also look at the dressing video where I go over all the different types of dressings that can be used in wound care. All right, as always, stay safe, study hard. I love that you're here. Leave a comment in the... Um, <laughs> I love that you're here. Leave a comment. I love engaging with you. And I'm sure you're going to have a lot of questions after today's video. All right. See you soon.